having sovereign cloud or digital India on sovereignty is very, very important because it's not just about the technology bit of it. It is an economic story. It is a security story. Wherein we will invest towards building a strong sovereign data center cloud and AI story out of India. The idea is to have productive technology alliances with the global technology majors because they have developed great technology, but the idea is not that we start becoming dependent on them. We should use their technology, we should have their alliances, but we should actually use those technologies to build our own sovereign stack. India has created semiconductor mission, which means India is able to design and fabricate and assemble and package its own chips in India itself. Hope digital transformation. So, uh, what is your view on the topic? Having sovereign cloud or digital India on sovereignty is very, very important because it's not just about the technology bit of it. It is an economic story. It is a security story. And having everything in-house is very, very important because then we are running on the regulations that we write and we have the uh, gatekeepers within our country. So, it's extremely important. Uh, if you see that India has already announced about chip, chip manufacturing units in Tolera as well as in Assam, so how do you, uh, how is your view on these steps as India has progressed towards establishing own sovereign tech? Absolutely, like I said before, I are uh, the latest example of the Nayara energy is a perfect example of what happens when you don't have control on your own, uh, when you're not housed within the country, right? Because there's so many geopolitical factors and it's not just a business factor. So having everything on our own soil, working on our own terms is extremely important for us to grow and innovate. And can you please tell us about the key progress of government has met regarding the innocent? as well as, as uh, India's semiconductor. Okay. Uh, see, we have committed about $20 million towards investment, uh, in infrastructure investment, and that itself tells us about where how committed India is. We have the DPDP Act coming into play. We have the, uh, the localization mandates coming into play. So India is very focused on building stronger uh, I wouldn't say maybe fences around our country so that we are on the global table, but at the same time we are able to work within our own confines and regulations. So uh, today, if you see how the world has evolved in the last uh, three to four years and this whole localization trend that has started and every country sort of uh, trying to figure out things for their, themselves, uh, we went from an era of globalization for the last two decades to now this reverse globalization or localization that is happening and uh, therefore the whole sovereignty of data, sovereignty of IT is becoming more critical. Especially after the uh, global regional conflicts which have started in many parts of the world, uh, countries are now relooking at their entire stack and seeing that in case they were to get into a conflict with any country like India came very close to one few months back, how do they how does their IT strategy and IT infrastructure pan out in terms of dependency on any foreign organization, government, etc. Uh, so from that perspective, I think Government of India has been taking some very key initiatives uh, over the last two to three years, uh, starting with privatization of the government's Megraj Cloud, where they launched a PPP model, uh, uh, partnering with large Indian data center cloud providers and offering them the opportunity to come and operate these government clouds, so that's one part. Then creating newer uh, government-owned cloud providers like STPI, uh, that is something that uh, we at Yota are operating. Even out of, uh, for NIC, out of the four data centers that they have uh, sort of brought into PPP, couple of them, the two larger ones are being operated by Yota currently. Uh, so Yota is playing a very critical role in this whole sovereign AI and cloud story. Uh, even under the India emission, which the government launched earlier this year, almost 80% of the GPUs committed towards all the key initiatives of Government of India for uh, progress of AI in the country, 80% of the GPUs are coming from Yota. So we saw this opportunity uh, uh, very early and we, uh, we at Yota uh, took this initiative that we will go ahead and invest uh, billions of dollars. Uh, we almost invested in one and a half billion dollar already and got another couple of billion dollars lined up for investment over the next few years, wherein we will invest towards building a strong sovereign data center cloud and AI story out of India.
uh, the second question would be regarding India has announced uh, about a ship manufacturing unit, uh, mm -hmm. as you know, in Bulera as well as in Assam. So, how do you, uh, how is your view on the step as India progress towards establishing its own sovereign tech stack? Yeah. So today, uh, India is, of course, like most countries in the world, is dependent on uh, chips which are d largely designed in the U.S., manufactured in Taiwan. Uh, and that is a uh, uh, challenge today. So having localized chip manufacturing definitely would lead to a, a lot of uh, uh, progress in terms of control and uh, take out a lot of third-party vendor risk. Today we are uh, dependent on a lot of global vendors for a lot of chips. And when I say chips, it's not just AI chips we are talking about, which obviously NVIDIA globally uh, controls, but uh, even a lot of other system chips and uh, compute chips, uh, IoT chips, etc., which are very, very critical for operations of many, many critical technologies that also needs to be indigenized. So I think this is a very, very important and urgent requirement and hopefully coming up of these chip manufacturing facilities will help India attain sovereignty on the chip side also. You uh, can just see on uh, you know, government uh, that is regarding the AI mission right. as well as uh, India's semiconductor mission. Okay. So, India mission is something we are very closely associated with. I can definitely comment on that. Uh, so, uh, if you look at the US, uh, large enterprises came up and sort of started the entire AI revolution there, uh, the likes of OpenAI and uh, X and all. Uh, so, in India, obviously, the market size was not large enough for enterprises and everybody was looking for somebody else to take the initiative. So, the government of India said to attain AI sovereignty and leadership for the country, they will do the investment and that's how the whole India mission story came up. Uh, the government earmarked 10,500 crores approximately for investing in AI compute, AI skilling and enabling AI startups build foundational uh, large language models or LLMs from India. And I think that is the most critical part that uh, sort of we've been missing and where we've been lagging behind for the last uh, 18 to 24 months. And now with the advent of these Indian LLMs, which are sovereign LLMs designed and built by Indians for India, India will really leapfrog uh, in the global AI race. And uh, uh, already one uh, LLM has uh, started work uh, on our GPUs by a company called Servum. And there are three more companies which have been identified by or allocated budgets by India Emission, uh, subsidy by India Emission for creation of LLMs. So we are keenly looking forward to these new platforms coming up out of India for India and that will sort of take us ahead uh, in the AI race. I think I have been speaking about it for last six years that the geopolitical situations and something which is so very visible in the last couple of months that a country must need to protect its sovereignty and the global wars are no more conventional wars which are fought with weapons. The global wars now are being fought with who is having his own digital sovereignty, who has control over the entire digital stack, which starts right from who can manufacture and own its own chips, its own servers, its own routers, its own switches, coming to, in AI context, who can own its own large language models, which are trained on its own data sets, who can build its own apps for its own use cases. So this entire stack is something which we need to have in our own control. The idea is to have productive technology alliances with the global technology majors because they have developed great technology, but the idea is not that we start becoming dependent on them. We should use their technology, we should have their alliances, but we should actually use those technologies to build our own sovereign stack, combining their technologies, combining open source technologies, combining our homegrown skill sets, and then making a digital infrastructure which is completely in our own control so that the unfortunate incidents which for example recently we have seen a hyperscaler got conflicted as to which lot to follow they are uh, headquartered in the united states uh, their customer is in india to whom they are serving mission critical applications but there was a law which was passed by a, another entity in a different continent where this hyperscaler also has big business but they actually ended up stopping the services of an indian customer who was possibly under some sanctions now this is something which is a wake up call for countries for governments and for enterprises that you cannot just depend on one foreign cloud operator you will have to also create your own sovereign tech also i am very very happy that in india 
this is something which is the realization in government circles for quite a lot of time and that is why when you see uh, uh, a semiconductor mission, when you see an uh, India AI mission, when you see electronic component manufacturing and government giving subsidies for that, all these are ultimately dots which are connecting towards to create ourselves a, a you know, a sovereign tech for the country. You talked about the chip manufacturing. As you know that India is, uh, uh, has announced about the chip manufacturing unit in Holera as well as in Assam. Yeah. So, uh, what is your view about the focus and establishing of our own uh, sovereign tech stack? Absolutely. That is why I said that when you are talking about a complete digital sovereignty, it starts at the chip level, right? While in India today, we uh, as a country have started manufacturing equipment. You know, you import chips, but you are manufacturing your own servers. You are fabricating motherboard, you are manufacturing servers, you are manufacturing routers and switches, the component which goes into, uh, you know, telecom equipments. Uh, we have started building our own models, right, AI models with our own data sets. We obviously are always a leader in building applications and the, you know, the software stack on the top. So that was always the strength of India where we are sovereign. We have a great startup ecosystem, we have a great skill set ecosystem. But what is not there in India, which is actually making India dependent on other parties all the time is actually chips. While we may be designing chips in India because we have a huge GCC ecosystem, but let's understand that even the designing and engineering is not a India's IP. That is a design engineering happening in India, but for creating the IP of some global company whose GCC is there in India. So we start doing the designing and engineering of chips in India and we have foundries in India which actually manufacture and assemble and package these chips in India. So this semiconductor mission and the government emphasis on that, it is actually a step in the very, very right direction. It is at the root of becoming a complete, uh, you know, a sovereign nation in terms of digital, uh, digital infrastructure. If you, walk, if you talk about digital protection and other sectors related to this, uh, if you can just like on the uh, key areas from which you know that the government is focusing on AI mission as well as uh, this is India's semiconductor mission. Yes, as I said that if I if we just see whether it is a complete AI stack or whether we see a complete cloud stack on which any mission critical applications of government or enterprise are running in, it always starts at the ground level which is chips, right? From chips level you actually end up making equipment, on the top of that you start making operating systems, then you run, uh, you know, in case of AI for example, you actually have data sets, then you have models, and then you have applications, right? So, Government of India is clearly understanding this whole stack which need to be completely owned by India. As I said, at the chip level, India has created semiconductor mission, which means India is able to design and fabricate and assemble and package its own chips in India itself. Starting has been done maybe with chips which are 28 nanometer, but I'm very sure once this mission starts, right, we will start manufacturing the most high-end 2 nanometer, 3 nanometer chips also. And I think as the Minister of IT announced also, that within five years India can also expect its own GPU manufacturing also in India, which will be a real sovereignty at a root level. Then you are not dependent on a chip which is designed, let's say, in US and manufactured, let's say, in Taiwan. India will be able to design and manufacture in India itself. Now on the top of that, so this is semiconductor mission, which is addressing this point, right? We we also would have seen that India now is also trying to find other sources of rare earth metals also. Prime Minister visited so much of countries in the, you know, in, 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 the, in, the, in the Latin America and Africa. The reason was that if China has put a huge control on rare earth, which presumably they are owning 90% of the rare earths in the world, then India will have to be self-dependent rare earths because these are the rare earths which are actually being used in manufacture of electronics. So that is another component which government is very, very serious about why most of the people are not able to see this big picture. Then on the top of that, why India India decided under India AI mission to build its own model. There was a lot of discussion that India should uh, rather use the model which already have been built in US and India should only be the so-called use case capital of the world. I would rather say it is a great decision that India decided not from economic reasons but from geopolitical sovereignty reasons that India should build its own LLM. One is that we will not be dependent on any foreign closed source or open source model. What is open source today like a llama? Tomorrow it may not be open source. Again India will be dependent on third party. So India should make its own LLM. Second is LLMs ultimately become a representative of human intelligence. If human intelligence in India, I am guided by my own culture, by my own data set, by my own thought pattern, my own context, my LLMs also should reflect my culture, my thought pattern. So Indian LLMs should be trained in India's own data set. So that is a great thing which is the biggest focus of India AI mission. That India AI mission number one is making GPUs available at a very, very low price. You will be, uh, you know, happy to know that. A GPU which is otherwise available at $4 or $5 per hour in the world, in India, 
thanks to India Emission and the whole, I would say, very serious thinking in India Emission, the same GPU is available to the end users at less than one dollar per hour, which is a great, great achievement of India Emission. And then now India Emission is trying to. Earlier, I think they had thought of funding four or five LLMs, but I think the response to them is so high that India Emission presumably is actually trying to fund many, many more LLMs, which may be general purpose LLM like a Chat GPT uh, trained in Indian language in the Indian culture and context. But I think many of them will be industry specific, also targeted towards agriculture or targeted toward, let's say, uh, you know, education or targeted towards healthcare, which is very, very required for India. On the top of that, India Emission also is now taking care of, okay, assembling a data sets that Indian data sets are available to everybody. Right now, they're in silos. They may be into government department, they may be into enterprises. So government through AI Kosh, which is a part of India Emission, is also trying to create a data sets marketplace also. And on the top of that, then India Emission is targeting how do we fund the education of AI into schools and colleges? How do we fund the startups? How do we also take care of observability, explainability, and the governance of AI, which is one more pillar of India. So if, I, if you see the things together, India government focusing on rare earth availability for manufacture of electronics. India also talking about semiconductor vision, which means manufacturing of chips. India focusing on make in India servers and network devices and Indian government focusing on Indian data and Indian models. So effectively, government of India through different missions is actually trying to see this holistically and trying to make sure that we are truly sovereign at every stack of the, every layer of the stack.